I have been asked a lot to cover the Eastern Pacific a little more when it comes to the hurricane season going on. And now that we have a storm threatening land, we are going to do so. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. This is Tropical Storm Eric, the fifth named storm of the Pacific hurricane season. And this one could and likely will threaten parts of the Mexican coastline as a hurricane over the next couple of days. We're going to break this storm down, look at some different models, including the new Google AI model. So stick around for that. Later on in the video, and I will have the chapters in the description, there's also a pretty high-end severe weather threat across the United States in the Plains later tonight on June 17th. That severe weather threat continues into June 18th. We'll break that part down. And then also talk about the very quiet, thankfully, uh, Atlantic hurricane season, completely opposite of the super active Pacific hurricane season. So before we get into the video, if you want to stay up to date on all things weather and help us take out the trash and join the Just Weather Garbage Crew as we take down some of the mis misinformation, fear-mongering, and hype out there on the social media world, you come to the right place. Join the team. Hit that subscribe button. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Okay, that was long-winded. Let's get to it. This is the spin. This is Tropical Storm Eric. It looks like it is pretty healthy, and it is expected to start to get a little stronger as we go forward over the next day or so. Again, we're talking landfall on Thursday morning, today being Tuesday the 17th, so I mean not much time, an early Thursday morning at that if it goes kind of right down the center of the National Hurricane Center's forecast cone. So I want to bring that up right away and show you that forecast going forward. There is it full screen. They are expecting Category 2 intensity, that's maximum sustained winds of 110 miles an hour as it nears the Pacific coast of Mexico. Now, there's still some uncertainty as who gets the core of this. That would be where the 110-mile-per-hour winds would be. Follow the center there, or the I should say the center of the storm could bounce anywhere in between the left side of the cone, the center of the cone, and to the right side of the cone. So again, don't pay attention to the exact center of the cone. We could be talking about landfall from Puerto Escondido all the way up to uh, Acapulco or even further to the northwest um, if this were to skirt the shoreline a little bit further. Now, we would like that because there is going to be a weakening trend regardless of if it stays on or off land at this point. But right now, it appears that we're talking about a Category 2 hurricane threatening the Pacific coastline, anywhere from Puerto Escondido to Acapulco. As soon as Thursday morning, and maybe even the wee hours of Thursday morning, if it were to stay on the right side of that track, again, to account for the error. I want to show you the computer models. We're going to go through a bunch of the high-resolution stuff coming up and take a look at that brand spanking new Google AI uh, model that did very, very well, or at least better than everybody else with Hurricane Otis back in 2023. We all know that one if you live on the Pacific side of Mexico, especially in this general area. Now, there is a grouping to keep it on the western side of the cone, so it's going to be interesting to see updates going forward from the National Hurricane Center to see if there's going to be that trend going over. So this is going to put things uh, a little bit closer to Acapulco, certainly the eastern side of it. And then further down the Pacific coast, there's also this other camp with a grouping of models that wants to send it closer towards Puerto Escondido. So again, it's important to be on guard to be watching these forecasts and to do as much preparation as possible because again, any kind of shift in both track and intensity, if you're kind of downplaying it because it's like, oh, you only think it's a category two there's not going to be much reaction time here as this storm is, again, potentially going to be on land in less than 48 hours already. So that are some of the spaghetti models that we often show. This is going to be the GFS. This is going to be the wind gust model here, and this is going to be the GFS rendition of where it thinks the center is going to be. So there's, again, the potential for the winds, and that's going to be the 100% shot for rain going forward because it has the the rain uh, un underlay or uh, underneath where the wind is. But nonetheless, I mean, we're talking about in this general area, if it follows this path right along from <clears throat> Ponchutla in a Puerto Escondido, my apologies for the mispronunciation, um, that's going to be 
at this point, according to the GFS, the best opportunity for those winds of 110 miles an hour. So I want to get you over to the other weather computer now, and we are going to look into the high-resolution model. I know fresh on everybody's mind is the crazy rapid intensification of Otis back in 2023. So we're looking at everything, obviously, in great detail. We always do uh, to see if there's any kind of shenanigans, as I like to call them. So here is the HALFS model. This is uh, sole purpose is to forecast the intensity. Not sole purpose, but it's it was designed to capture rapid intensification events, and it does have that storm coming ashore, um, 969 millibars, 900, uh, right around 970, lower the pressure, stronger the storm. So that is in line with that official forecast of a Category 2 storm. Same deal, 966. This is going to be the HAFS B model, a little bit different, different physics in there. This is the H mon. We've had this one hanging around a little while longer. Location, relatively speaking, about the same. A little bit stronger, down to 960 millibars. So now we could be approaching... Uh, more of that major hurricane category three status on the HMON. And then I unveiled to you, this is something that we're going to be watching closely. This is the brand spanking new Google AI model that has done very, 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 very well in testing. And Otis was one of the storms that this was tested on and it did better than everybody else i am going to have a separate video dropping very very shortly that breaks down some of those test runs i use otis milton and helene in its testing phase and i'll show you how well it did and i'll explain what this does and how this differs from some of the traditional models that we use but what i want to show you here is the orange color is going to be the european ensemble mean all those orange dots are the other uh, the other members of the ensemble there. So you can see kind of the spread. And then the blue line is the mean of the 50 members of that make up the new Google AI model. So pretty cool stuff. And this is going to be something that we are tracking. But I want to show you again, especially because it did so well for Otis. And we know what happened with Otis. It it still missed its high-end intensity, as you'll see in the future video dropping within the next couple of days. But it's already a little bit further to the north, and it's a little stronger. Essentially, and you'll find out more in the video that drops on this model, it's using past weather events to forecast the future. Yeah, it's kind of redundant. It uses past weather events to forecast so there we go, Category 1 storm it's expecting by the time we get to, this is going to be uh, Thursday morning, and that's already ashore. So this is going to be 2 o'clock in the morning, so it's a little faster. And let's just kind of take a look at where, kind of where we were looking at um, in terms of the official forecast. But there is Puerto Escondido, right down in here. We'll get you a little closer so you can see it. We'll back up. It is favoring something a little bit further up, further northwest up the coastline, closer to Acapulco. Just looking at this now in real time. It has it coming ashore as a Category 1 hurricane. Let me just back this up a little bit just to make sure that we are getting the intensity right. Speaking of the intensity, let me uh, pull this over. You can see the intensity forecast over here onto the right. So its highest intensity would be for it to get to the mean anyway. Has it getting up to a Category 1 hurricane? That's what we just showed you there on the map. But the other interesting thing, and this is where it did a better job in Otis, some of its ensemble members are pegging Cat 3 intensity. So it's giving their more of an upper, the higher end solutions here with those different members. The European ensemble, uh, some of those members even go a little bit higher. Let me turn on all of those so we can see the lines there. But there, all the orange represents the European ensembles. All the blue represents the Google AI model. So there are a few of those members of each 
that get this to major hurricane status. So something to watch. And we'll, again, watch this model in real time as the National Hurricane Center kind of tests. And I've said this like five times now, but there's going to be a lot more information on how this works um, coming up in a later video. Just to kind of cross the I's and dot the T's, I wanted to show you this. This is the climatological thing. So if you're wondering, oh my gosh, like what is going on in the Eastern Pacific? It is juiced right now. It is wild. We've had the fifth name storm develop today, June 17th. Typically, we don't see that happen until July 23rd in the Eastern Pacific. So we are a little more than a month ahead of schedule. By the way, uh, on the Atlantic side, we typically don't see our first storm until June 20th. So we're not behind schedule yet. I do think, though, we are going to be significantly behind schedule. It just isn't favorable. And this is something that we talked about at length, even though there's been a lot of those scary thumbnails around while the Eastern Pacific is juiced. And again, there is Eric. It's really hard for the Atlantic to be favorable for development. It's normally one or the other. It's seldom both. The other main thing, we have this big chunk of Bermuda high pressure out there just kind of ruling the roost. It's pulling dust and dry air right on through the main development region. It's pulling It's adding wind shear to the environment, so nothing can even uh, get organized, and it's going to suppress everything down into Central America and keep those rainstorms way, way far south, certainly away from the United States. But again, there is a lot um, of things happening keeping the Atlantic quiet. So since that severe weather threat is getting underway by the time this video is posted, we're going to start with tomorrow, but I'm going to show that high-resolution model that I often show you guys Um, That will include tonight as this is going to be a late night event, but that severe weather threat going to jog east uh, back toward Detroit. We're going to be watching for you guys, Milwaukee, Chicago, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Fort Wayne, and that level three out of five, that enhanced risk down to Evansville, uh, Bloomington. Nasty severe weather expected, level two out of five through Little Rock, Conway, Jonesboro, Fort Smith, Fayetteville, and then back down closer to Dallas to a lesser degree. We're in that one out of five, but again, that severe weather risk is still possible. That also includes uh, close to New York City and then back down towards Washington, D.C. in that secondary bubble of that severe weather potential. So I wanted to take you now starting with the severe weather risk for tonight, and this could get ugly. So this is 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern, and we have a couple of complexes of thunderstorms sliding through. This is big-time stuff. We're talking about wind gusts, 75 to 100 miles an hour within these bowing segments, as we call them. So if you're watching radar tonight and you see these things kind of bow out, just like this, the high-res model showing that, You get really strong winds coming in behind those lines of thunderstorms within these mesoscale convective uh, systems, as we call them, uh, sliding on through. So wind, damaging wind gusts all along that line right on right through there. So South Kansas, northern Oklahoma, southern Missouri into northern Arkansas, big time severe weather risk. We have stuff kind of all over the place on Wednesday, there's four o'clock. There's the nasty weather that has moved through Chicago, closer to Fort Wayne, Indy, and then back down towards the plains again. And then also just hanging out here closer to the eastern side of Kentucky. And then more strong storm is going to be possible into the early morning hours of Thursday. So there is a ton going on, just jam packed in that video. Uh, watching for that super high-end severe weather threat tonight on June 17th. I had a couple of community posts on that today because I wanted to give you that heads up before the video came out and obviously wanted to touch on the Eastern Pacific. Again, I always ask you guys, what would you like to see more of on this channel, the videos we make, the conversations we have together as a team? And one of the main things was talk about the Eastern Pacific more. Certainly, most of the storms on the Eastern Pacific don't affect land. They just roll out. They affect people if you have boats or things like that. Um, certainly fishing, certainly the cruise lines, things like that. But now we certainly have a storm, a uh, potential hurricane, likely hurricane, bearing down on the Pacific coast of Mexico. So really wanted to touch on that for anybody across Mexico or anybody in the States that might have family on that side uh, or vacationing. Wanted to get that out there, knowing that we have a third threat in the last three years on that side, almost in that same kind of spot 
uh, that Otis started things off in 2023. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. If you're still with me, hit that thumbs up button, post in the comments what the weather is doing, where you're watching from, and we will catch you next time.